The first ride on a new bike is always a moment fraught with excitement and anticipation. With modern geometry and parts, the reviews promise that it should climb like a goat and descend like a downhill bike. Every part of the bike is new and untouched and it's going to feel fresh and amazing. All this adds up to a boost in confidence and courage. And it's this very fortunate situation that I find myself in. In my last video, I visited my friend Brian's new bike shop, Smith Creek Cycle. Brian and I spent the day together putting together my new bike, the Deviate Highlander, a high pivot mountain bike out of Scotland. The finished bike looks amazing and I could stare at it all day, but bikes are meant to be ridden and it's time to get it dirty. So the following day, we visited the namesake of Brian's shop, Smith Creek. Filled with trail crisscrossing ravines, jumps, and of course woodwork. And of course Brian knows this area like the back of his hand and has even built a feature or two out here. He would be the perfect guide. We're also riding with our friends Antoine and Isabel. Fellow van lifers, you may remember them from our videos last summer where we toured BC together. During the winter, they switched to ski mode and spent the season hunting for powder in Revelstoke. Now that winter is all but over, they've met us here for their first ride of the year. But as winter fades away, a few remnants had us toughing out the climb. At the same time, some small discrepancies in my bike setup started to appear. Adjustments needed to be made. But some adjustments are much trickier than others. For example, the shock on my bike has a ton of dials on it. From high and low speed compression and rebound to air pressure and volume spacers, there are six different settings I need to tune on this thing. So to get those adjustments just about right, I'm using a shock whiz. Basically, it collects data from the shock by reading the changes in air pressure as the shock moves through its travel. Although the app is kind of clunky, it does seem to do a decent job of getting the shock settings in the ballpark. I'll likely run this on my fork in the future. At the top of our climb, and with my brakes not quite bedded in yet, our first trail would be the classic Feel the Love. You can't come to Kelowna and not ride this flowy wonder. First descent on the new bike. on the bike were good. It felt quite a bit more plush than my previous bike, and it's those bigger hits that the bike just handles better, which should come as no surprise as it has 20 millimeters more travel in the rear. Heading up for another lap. You just, oh! What happened? Apparently I didn't set up my derailleur correctly. All of this is just part of getting a new bike set up though, and soon we were on our way again. With a properly functioning drivetrain, we visited some bigger stunts. <laughs> the first would involve a big weakness of mine, a blind drop. Yes, I prefer to see the landing as I'm sending, but I'm slowly getting over this completely rational fear. And with a little help from Antoine, smooth as butter. With 
that new bike stoke still boosting my confidence, we return the next day to ride a few more trails here at Smith Creek. Brian had to stay at the shop this time though. Santa's Revenge had a few fun wooden stunts to get warmed up on. But my real goal was to hit a double black jump line called Smith Creek Jump Line. And as advertised, big jumps. The first of which was a massive 27 foot table. Nice. With the lip being fairly steep, it was a bit too big for all of us that day. Ugh. With each of us casing it badly, one by one. The next jump, at about 20 feet, would be a little more achievable for us. It's just that there was a tree in the landing. <laughs> I'd come around the corner and see the tree and go, nope. Feels like, this jump feels like you're going straight for that tree. But by intentionally staying right, the jump was definitely achievable. Just with not a ton of room for error. <laughs> But the next jump combined the best features of the previous two. At 27 feet, it was just as long as the first one. Oh, another big one. That's a nice one though. But like the second jump, the lip wasn't very steep, making it long and low. And the treeless landing, definitely a plus. It took a few attempts to get a feeling for it. <laughs> Oh, I almost made it. 27 feet is pretty long after all, especially for a first ride on a new bike. A bike I don't fully understand yet. How will it react when I hit a bump? Will it buck me on jumps? Do I even know the brakes yet? But all of this never really crossed my mind. I was just so stoked to be riding an awesome new bike that just going for it felt right. Woo! Yeah! Got it that time. Got it? Yeah. Oh yeah. That new bike confidence made me do it. And it felt great to get in the air again. I'm not even sure I've hit a jump this big outside of a bike park before. Yeah. <laughs> Phew. That was a good one. Although the bike wasn't perfectly set up and with things needing to be dialed in, the stoke was high. The bike felt great, and that new bike confidence was real. I was able to hit most everything I came across. And I think this is something that anybody riding their new bike for the first time can relate to. It's looking like the Bumble Beast and I are going to have a great year together. But, as always, thanks for watching and stay gnarly.